Okay, the first command separator that we're going to look at is the new line character. This is quite a unique separator as it initiates execution of a preceding command. If we type a command into our shell, nothing will happen until we hit return. When we hit return, echo is executed and our text is printed out. The next command separator that we're going to look at is the semicolon. Unlike the new line character, the semicolon does not trigger execution, but allows you to execute a series of commands sequentially on the same command line. To trigger execution, we still need a new line character at the end, so we press return. Having spaces around the semicolon or not will have no effect on their function. The spaces just make what we've written easier to read. The presence of a semicolon at the end of the line without proceeding with another command will have no negative effect. By comparison, if we were to execute the commands on separate lines, we would have a prompt in between the output. The third command separator we will look at is the backslash. As you may already know, the backslash is used to escape the first character following it. So let's get a command going. As you can see, the prompt has changed and we can add more input. Now, if we press return, we are still prompted for more input, which is not what we expected. We could use control D or control C to get our original prompt back, but this will give us an error. The issue is the apostrophe or single quote in don't that we didn't deal with. We could deal with it now by entering a single quote to close the previous single quote that we used in our text and hit return. But as you can see, this is not the output that we intended. You can see the backslash we used is amongst the sentence and don't has no apostrophe. This is just one thing that you need to pay particular attention to, especially with long command lines. Make sure everything that needs to be escaped is escaped, otherwise you will get unintended outcomes. So let's run that again and escape the single quote in don't. But we also need to get rid of the apostrophe that we added, so let's just control C that and do it again. You may have noticed that the line still isn't correct. Onto one has no space in between it. Spacing is probably the main thing to watch out for when using backslashes to create multi-line command lines. Let's explore this with a shorter command line so that we can see it clearly. So with incorrect spacing, we get an error. If we look at exactly what ran, you can see that there is no space in between WC and the dash C option. There are two places that we could put the space in that we need. We could put the space in before the backslash, or we could put the space in after the backslash and after we have pressed return like this. Now we are getting the expected output and that leads us onto the next command line separator, which is the pipe. So you probably already know a lot about pipes as you've watched the video I made covering pipes. So I'll keep this brief. The pipe separates commands. Similar to the semicolon, it does not start execution, but unlike the semicolon, it changes the source of standard in or the destination of standard out of a command. So let's chain a few commands together just as an example. So let's echo dash n as we don't want the new line character that echo adds to arguments and pipe that through said, which will replace th in this with a single t and then pipe the output of that into wc with the dash c flag to count the characters. We should get three as output and this is exactly what we get. So the next command separator that we will cover is the ampersand. You may recognize that the ampersand character is used after a command to run it in the background like this. But what you may not be aware of is that you can do this with multiple commands on the same line, like this. If we hit return, echo one is run in the background and echo two is actually run in the foreground, as there is no ampersand after echo two. So let's add one and as you can see, we've created two background jobs. You're not limited to only two background jobs per line, you can add more, so let's add a few more. And again, you don't need to have spaces around the ampersands, it just makes it look cleaner and easier to read. Just something to remember, background jobs are not run sequentially, they are run concurrently. The output from the background jobs is interspersed. This is because control is passed back and forth between all of the background jobs. And the last command line separator that we will cover is the left and right parentheses. When you enclose a command or group of commands within parentheses, a subshell is forked and the commands within the parentheses are executed within this subshell. We can see this if we echo the bash PID variable. 
This shows us the process ID of our current shell, and now if we surround the same command with parentheses and hit enter, the PIDs are different. If we run it again, we will get another different PID for the subshell, which is the inner PID. Once all of the tasks within the subshell are complete, the subshell closes. Within the parentheses, you can use any of the command separators that we have previously covered. And you can also create subshells within subshells. Okay, so that's brought us to the end. I hope you found it useful and thanks for watching. Goodbye.